Welcome to today's webinar titled Military Health System, Women's Health Emphasis. We are thrilled to have Army Lieutenant Colonel Nancy Parson and Commander Eva Domartefi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, if not, please forgive me, with us today. Army Lieutenant Colonel Nancy Parson currently serves as the Chief of the Women's Health Service line at the United States Army Office of the Surgeon General, United States Army Medical Command. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Eastern Kentucky University, and she earned her Master of Science in Nursing from Old Dominion University. Lieutenant Colonel Parson has served in a variety of nursing capacities throughout her Army career, including that as Clinical Nurse, Assistant Nurse Chief Nurse, ROTC Nurse Counselor, and Chief Maternal Child Health among others, and is Operational Iraqi Freedom Veteran. Also with us today, Commander Eva Domotofi has been a Navy Nurse Corp Officer for 20 years. She has a clinical background in pediatric, neonatal, and ambulatory care nursing, and is a pediatric nurse practitioner. Currently, serving as the Action Officer for the Division of Women's Health within the Medical Operations Directorate at the Navy Bureau of Medicine and Surgery, where she is engaged in women's health policy development and quality improvement initiatives. Without further delay, I will turn things over to our first presenter, Lieutenant Colonel Nancy Parson. Good afternoon. Um, I first want to read the disclaimer slide. The appearance of hyperlinks does not constitute endorsement by the Department of Defense of this website or the information, products, or services contained therein. For other than authorized activities such as military exchanges and morale, welfare, and recreation sites, the Department of Defense does not exercise any editorial control over the information you may find at these locations. Such links are provided consistent with the stated purpose of this Department of Defense sponsored webinar. And so I'd like to go to my first slide, which shows um, the purpose and outline, just to what I'm going to talk about today. The next slide, the background. In February of 2012, the Army Surgeon General, Lieutenant General uh, Horaho, commissioned a Women's Health Task Force to address unique health care considerations in a deployed and austere environment. From 2012 to 2015, that Women's Health Task Force worked on deployment-related issues in regards to our female soldiers. The task force concluded its work in May of 2015, and the Women's Health Service Line, which was also established in 2012, was created to be the enduring, the enduring service to implement initiatives consistent with an operating company model across all of the Army Medical Command. From 2015 to present, the Women's Health Service Line adopts best practices that focus on women's health management to care for women in a coordinated, collaborated, and patient-focused manner. Next slide shows our mission and vision statement. The Women's Health Service Line shapes enterprise-wide services and policies that foster collaboration and emphasize standardization for the betterment of our staff and beneficiaries. The vision is to be a highly functioning team that places preeminent value on patient and staff satisfaction. Some of the key functions and responsibilities with the Women's Health Service Line include establishing strategy, policies, and measures of performance and effectiveness to reduce unwarranted variances across the enterprise. Our lines of effort focus on wellness, women's, and newborn services, to improve the health and readiness of our female soldiers. Next slide. Our current initiatives include breastfeeding and lactation support program, group prenatal care, standardized breastfeeding education, focus on improving the OB obstetric patient experience, improving the health of our female soldiers, family members, and retirees, and also, we work in adjunct with Public Health Command for the Pregnancy Postpartum Physical Training Program. Next slide. Some of our women's health care services include many screenings for preventative care to include osteoporosis, mammography, cervical, scan cervical cancer, contraceptive counseling, and then the medical and surgical treatment for cervical, ovarian, and uterine cancer. 
And then that concludes my portion of the briefing, and I'll turn it over to Commander Domitofri. All right. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us at this uh, webinar today. Um, as um, Stan mentioned, I'm a Commander Eva Damatorfi, and that is how you pronounce it, so he was pretty close there. It's a tough one. Um, and uh, I have been a Navy nurse for uh, 20 years, so certainly um, some of what I talk about when I talk about women's health services, um, that is informed by my experiences as a nurse and a nurse practitioner, but then some of it also um, my experience here at the headquarters level, and then some of it my experience as a patient um, who's been cared for in, in these hospitals and and as the mother of two children who also receives care. And um, so uh, definitely, um, you know, today I'm here to represent Navy medicine, but it's very difficult to, you know, separate my experiences as a Navy healthcare professional from some of those uh, personal experiences that I've had. Um, and so Colonel Parsons uh, gave a great overview of kind of the, um, where the Army comes from in terms of their, you know, women's health policy and, and, and General Horoho really setting the, the guidelines and the standards for, for um, the infrastructure for women's health. Um, I'm going to take a slightly different approach and, and talk to you a little bit more about um, the, uh, the clinics, the hospitals, the services we offer, kind of where you as beneficiaries and patients interact with Navy medicine, particularly with the uh, w women's health services. So, but I think I, I should start with, with a little bit of the big picture in terms of, you know, Navy medicine's guiding mission is, is that we enable readiness, wellness, and health care to sailors, marines, their families, and all others entrusted to us worldwide, be it on land or at sea. And, and then there are, based on that, we have the strategic priorities of readiness, value, and jointness. But at the, at the MTF or the healthcare delivery level, what, um, what do we really care about in terms of um, caring for our patients is access safety and quality. And I'll, and I'll come back to a few of those points as I talk about what some of our services are. Um, so if, if we talk about, you know, the deck plate or the clinic level where you interact as patients with the healthcare system, um, you are probably receiving care at a clinic or a clinic within a hospital or a hospital uh, inpatient setting or possibly on a ship or in a field unit. So um, the Navy does have... Um, quite a few hospitals in the U.S. and overseas, and um, obviously um, health care on, on numerous ships and in, in field units. Um, but really, our, our care is centered or in the patient-centered medical home, which is also the fleet-centered medical home or the marine-centered medical home. So most of you are probably getting your primary care services in one of these uh, venues or one of these facilities and, uh, and interacting with a primary care manager. And in and, and that... Um, in that arena, this is uh, where you would receive many of your women's health services as it should be. And a lot of uh, what we do in women's health has a very much a preventive focus. So we don't necessarily have our own guidelines in the Navy. We follow clinical guidelines that are set forth by professional organizations. Of course, based on the readiness mission, maybe we do some extra things in terms of immunizations or more frequent physical exams to support the mission and to support readiness. But really, the preventive focus focus for women's health doesn't change um, because you're a Navy beneficiary. So um, what services do we provide and what services should you be receiving through your uh, primary care providers or your medical homes? So um, that is, includes things like cervical cancer screening, so the, the pap smear, which uh, most women are familiar with, um, uh, testing for HPV and other uh, sexually transmitted infections if appropriate, um, breast cancer screening, uh, family planning. Uh, counseling and possibly prescription or procedures, um, and then prenatal care. All of these can be provided um, within your medical home setting, although certainly um, some people do see a gynecologist or, you know, an obstetrician in a separate clinic for some of it, particularly the, the prenatal care. And back to the quality, a lot of what we do, um, we measure and we monitor. 
are we providing the right kind of care? Are we providing it in a timely manner? Are we meeting certain standards? And I can tell you um, uh, for sure that, yes, we are. Um, we monitor how, how, what percentage of our beneficiaries are getting pap smears and um, HPV testing a, according to these national guidelines. And we monitor, monitor that through a program called HEDIS, and it's, it's a very high percentage. Same with the breast cancer screening. Um, so we are meeting the quality standards that are set forth by these organizations and um, offering you and providing you with the appropriate preventive care um, that you need, both through your primary care managers and also through the larger medical neighborhoods. Um, and by medical neighborhood, those are all the entities that support primary care. For example, your primary care provider should be the one talking to you about a mammogram and doing a breast exam, but then the medical neighborhood supports that through the breast care center, through radiology or the surgical department. So um, we work together, um, the clinics and all of the different types of health care providers to, to bring you these, these services. Um, and I did mention uh, prenatal or obstetric care, and some of that is provided in your medical home, but certainly many of you um, have done or will seek uh, those services through a, an obstetric clinic or a specialized women's health clinic. And um, we have 16 hospitals in Navy Medicine, half of them are overseas, half of them are in the continental U.S., that do provide inpatient uh, OB services, and that means you can get your prenatal care and deliver your baby um, at that particular facility. And um, some kind of unique programs that we have that I could highlight, and Colonel Parsons mentioned that um, also, it's something certainly Army and Navy are very proud of introducing is the group prenatal care centering where you have the opportunity um, to have group prenatal visits periodically as opposed to just seeing a provider one-on-one. -on -one. And a lot of patients uh, like this very much for the community and the sharing experience in terms of the education and the shared experiences with other women um, who are going to be having a baby or delivering a baby around the same time as you. So it's an opportunity for not just health care but also relationship building and networking. Um, some other things in the obstetric uh, community that we're very proud of certainly is our emphasis and our support of breastfeeding. Um, breastfeeding education, breastfeeding mothers down the line, and um, several of our Navy hospitals have earned the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative distinction, which is basically an award um, or a recognition given to facilities um, that um, support um, breastfeeding, that have sta a standardized approach to breastfeeding, where all staff are trained in breastfeeding education. So we're, we're rather proud of that distinction on several of our hospitals, like Naval Hospital Jacksonville and Naval Hospital um, 29 Palms. Um, another program we've introduced in obstetrics um, is w with working with our anesthesia staff to provide nitrous oxide, which is an alternative um, pain management in labor to getting an epidural or spinal. And several of our hospitals are offering this as well, and it's been a, it's been a big patient satisfier. Um, and we're constantly looking for ways to change and innovate uh, in order to, um, and, and a lot of that is based on patient feedback. Patients say um, they would like, uh, like certain uh, procedures or opportunities or um, services, and certainly we can't um meet every single request or need, but um, there is a process by which we look into all of that. And, um, and some of these um, accomplishments that I mentioned were driven by what you, the patients and the beneficiaries, recommend or suggest to us. Um, so uh, I, I'll move away from the obstetric now, and I will talk about um, some of the other women's health service related services or that support um, you and your families. And these are things like postpartum follow-up, nurse-managed clinics. Uh, many of our facilities um, allow you to bring your baby in um, after delivery for things like weight checks, checks for jaundice, um, assistance with breastfeeding, and some of these clinics are run and managed by nurses, and they're highly accessible, and um, there's ample opportunity for you to, um, to sit down and talk to somebody about questions you may have about your newborn breastfeeding or other um, related topics. Um, another uh, area where um, we really have a strong focus within women's health is in family planning, and that includes um, counseling, 
as well as contraceptive prescriptions and um, contraceptive procedures. And Navy Medicine does offer the full scope of FDA, so the Food and Drug Administration approved contraceptives. And so that's everything from some uh, birth control pills, which many people are familiar with, to IUDs or Nexplanon, which are subdermal implants, which people are less familiar with but becoming much more common. So based on the stage in your life and your um, health health care uh, considerations, health care um, risks, um, we, have, uh, we offer a type of contraceptive that's right for you, or at least the discussion and the education with your health care provider to decide if this is the right time for you um, to be starting a family. And, uh, and so that is something that's available on, sh on ships and clinics and in hospitals and something we highly encourage you to bring up with your health care provider if they don't bring it up. Um, at the higher level, so we talked a little bit about what we have in our clinics and our hospitals, and um, where, how, are, how is all this managed or overseen? And that's done through the regions and the headquarters. So all of our clinics and hospitals fall under Navy Medicine West and Navy Medicine East, and they monitor the things that I mentioned earlier, safety, quality, and access. And then certainly at the headquarters level here in, uh, in the Bureau of Medicine in Falls Church, Virginia, um, we, um, we monitor these aspects of care as well um, to ensure, like I mentioned earlier, that you are receiving um, high quality, safe, and accessible health care um, at, um, at every facility that Navy Medicine has oversight over. Uh, so that is, uh, that's where I'll end my talk as far as the um, women's health services that Navy Medicine offers. And um, I think that um, the next step is uh, opening this up to questions from the audience. So we'll go on a short pause here and uh, we'll take your questions. Thank you. We do have some questions that have come in. Uh, the first question reads, do you have any information available regarding menopause, including perimenopause? What can I expect when I'm in this time of life? So um, this is, once again, we're, we're not necessarily here to put out um, clinical information or um, health, uh, help to provide medical guidance. However, yes, um, when you see your health care provider, that is absolutely part of the Well Woman exam, which is an annual recommended exam. And based on that stage or that time in your life that you're in, um, these are the discussions you should be having in perimenopause and menopause is, you know, a stage that all women uh, do eventually enter. So, yes, our, our primary care managers, our gynecologists, nurse practitioners, nurse midwives are well-versed on this topic in terms of being able to provide anticipatory guidance, counseling, and, if necessary, um, medication prescriptions or referrals based on um, your uh, condition. Okay, thank you. Next question. When will home births and birth centers be a part of the women's health care for TRICARE? That is something that we would definitely have to get back with you on. I know that there are discussions in regards to some of those. Um, in the Army, with, in Army medicine, we are looking at um, hydrotherapy inside the hospital, inside of our medical centers and Army community hospitals. Um, however, the Army has not looked at um, providing home births at this time. Okay, thank you. Next question reads, if you are not near a base, how does a woman receive birthing classes outside of a hospital, um, example like uh, Lamaze class and hypno birthing, et cetera? So if you are not near a base, um, you may be – so there's two, two answers to this. If you are geographically not located near a military treatment facility, you may be receiving your care through the uh, purchased care uh, civilian health care system, and those hospitals um, and facilities should be offering their own um, labor preparation classes like Lamaze, like breastfeeding, um, and so that would be deferred along with all of your other prenatal care and obstetric care to that civilian facility that is geographically close to where you live. Um, if you are receiving care at a Navy or Army or, or military um, health care facility for your prenatal care and you plan to deliver there, but you live very far away from that clinic or the hospital, um, 
you, you certainly have the opportunity to participate in the, um, the prenatal courses that we offer, or you can opt to take classes uh, on your own out in town at your own expense, um, keeping in mind that there are often in communities free classes available through organizations such as the La Leche League for breastfeeding, community networks for pregnant women or new moms. So there, there are often free options presented um, if, you, uh, if you want to pursue them. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Baby-friendly hospitals, is there a way to find out which hospitals are on uh, the list via a website? Um, we could definitely send you that information for Army. At this time, the Army has four different facilities that are in the process of getting baby-friendly designation. Uh, we did have two who are now part of the National Capital Region, who are no longer part of Army Medicine, if you will. So I can provide the names of those that are working towards that designation at this time. Okay, thank you. And this is a follow-up to the uh, one of the other questions pertaining to um, how does a woman receive birthing classes. Um, the question reads, I'm not delivering with the hospital at all, so are you saying TRICARE does not cover these outside of a hospital? So if you are um, enrolled to a military treatment facility, you're a prime patient and you're enrolled, um, you, ha you should have access to their educational opportunities at that facility. If you are planning to pursue a home birth um, and not through a military treatment facility, then you would need to um, work through your provider, so whether that's a midwife or whoever is delivering your baby, to find out what are the local resources for that type of education. Um, so it, it depends on, once again, where you're seeking your care and, and what's available through your community. But no, I do not believe that those courses are reimbursable if you are on a, if you're TRICARE, uh, if you're not receiving the care in the military facility. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, no other questions have come in. So I'm going to just give it a few more seconds to just just to see if any questions are being typed up and just having the sent button hasn't been sent yet. So um doesn't look like any questions are, are coming. So um, was there anything else you guys wanted to conclude with before we um, close the webinar? Yes, this is Colonel Parson. I just wanted to um, definitely thank Commander Domitoffrey for giving her explanation of, of Navy medicine. And one thing that I wanted to point out is here at the Office of the Surgeon General, we work together collaboratively, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy, and many of our health care benefits, many of our services are identical in all services. And so some of the things that Commander Domitoffrey was speaking in regards to the patient care medical homes, uh, we have the same types of things within the Army, so I just wanted to, to point that out and make sure that you are aware that many of the services are, are the same, and we all do work together in order to ensure quality and safe care for our patients. And our clinical practice guidelines and everything that we do inside of our military treatment facilities are based on the national standards, and we're always um, looking and measuring so that we can ensure that we are providing the best care for our beneficiaries. Okay, we did uh, have uh, two other questions uh, come in, so I'm going to go ahead and um, address those. Um, do you find discrepancies between services for active members and retired members? Is this uh, being addressed? Do we have a wrap around services? So if a woman is diagnosed with cancer, does she also have the chance to meet with a um, psychotherapist or support groups? So I think that's two different questions. So Stan, would you mind repeating the first one about the active versus retired? Sure. Um, do you find discrepancies between services for active members and retired members? For um, and this is Colonel Parson. In regards to services, um, services are available for both active and retirees. It does sometimes depend on where you are enrolled to ensure the availability for the retirees. Um, the active duty and their family members will at times have um, first enrollment over the retirees. However, the benefits 
and the services are still available at those services. And so again, you would have to check with your local TRICARE agent um, when you are enrolled to determine what services would be available for a retiree at that location. Okay. Um, did you want me to read the second part or did you? Yeah. Okay. Um, the second uh, part of this question is, do we have uh, wraparound services? Um, so if a woman is diagnosed with cancer, does she also have the chance to meet with a, um, a psych psychotherapist or support groups? Yes. Yeah, so wraparound services, that's what I was um – I mentioned earlier, this is Commander Domitorfi. When we talk about, we have the medical home and the medical neighborhood. And these are all um, multidisciplinary or intradisciplinary entities. And what that means is there's a lot of different types of healthcare providers working together to ensure that all of the patient's healthcare needs are met. So, for example, when the medical home setting, we don't just have a physician that you see. Um, there are nurses involved in that care. There's case managers. There's pharmacists, um, so that all of the and there's mental health or behavioral health providers to ensure that it's not just your immediate medical um, condition that's being addressed. That all of those other aspects are being considered. That we have the right people with the like right level of knowledge or expertise managing the dis different aspects of your care. When we expand that to the medical neighborhood, so that's not just the primary or the patient-centered medical home, that's all of the different specialties at that particular facility or even within the local community that work together to support the care of that patient. So when you mentioned cancer care, absolutely. So when a diagnosis of cancer, um, you're not just seeing an oncologist. Um, you also are probably working with the care manager. You have the option for, you know, individual uh, counseling, mental health counseling, um, psychotherapy, group care. Um, you know, you may be working with a nutritionist uh, to meet that those needs as well. Um, a pharmacist may be involved in managing um, medications um, out, part, as part of that cancer care and other medications you may be on. So it's that medical neighborhood approach where many different people and specialties work together to ensure we're meeting all of the patient's needs. Okay, great. Um, the next question reads, is there someone I can contact for home birth questions and coverage, um, a, spe a specific advocate uh, contact? I'm 31 weeks pregnant and still getting the runaround in regards to coverage and services. I'm a spouse and a provider and still um, constantly getting dead-end answers. So is that question can be sent to the website, the MOS webinars? at militaryonesource.com, then we'll be able to um, provide you some additional information for that question. Okay, great, thank you. Um, at this time, we have no more questions that have come into the uh, platform. So I would like to thank our presenters, um, Army Lieutenant Colonel Nancy Parson, Parson and Commander Eva Domitofi. Close. Get okay, close. close. Okay, <laughs> thank you for sharing your invaluable um, experience and expertise. I would also like to thank our attendees for participating in today's webinar. And if you have, um, if you find yourself having questions after the webinar is over, please email moswebinars at militaryonesource dot com, and I'll get these questions over to today's print, uh, presenters, and we'll get an answer back to you um, as soon as we can. Um, this does conclude today's uh, webinar on military health systems, women's Stan. health. Yes. Hi, Stan. This is Colonel Parson. Um, just as a closing note from Commander Domitofri and I, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we definitely wanted to re uh, remind people to make appointments for their breast exams, make sure that you are always looking at um, preventative care for yourself. One of the strategic messages from the Army um, is the performance triad, if you have not heard about that. But the performance triad consists of sleep, activity, and nutrition. With sleep, it's getting eight hours of sleep a night, getting 30 minutes of activity every day, and then ensuring that you have a well-balanced diet. So all of that is to help improve your health. And so don't forget Breast Cancer Awareness Month and, and get yourself checked out. Okay, we did have one last question come in as I was uh, closing, so I, w I would like to give this person a chance to um, 
have her uh, question um, answered. So the question reads, if I'm a retired Air Force family, family member, can I receive care at any other military base? So, Stan, this is Commander Domitorfi from Navy. Um, so, once again, it goes back to the, uh, the tri TRICARE and the enrollment rules at certain facilities. So, yes, increasingly, more and more of our facilities are, are tri-service, meaning we have providers there from the different services and we have patients from different services, both active and retired. However, as Colonel Parsons mentioned, some of our facilities, particularly the smaller ones, do have enrollment caps where we need to prioritize uh, active duty and active duty family members who are stationed in that area as the kind of the first uh, right of first refusal for enrollment. Um, however, um, if retirees are accepted at that particular facility, then yes, they, we would equally, they would equally be considered whether they're an Air Force retiree, an Army retiree, a Navy or a Marine Corps retiree, or any other eligible uh, retiree or family member. So it's the distinction is between some sometimes between the active duty and the active duty family members of the retirees, but not on the, the service that you were in or that you were a part of. Okay, great. Thank you for um, sharing that information. Um, well, at this time, this concludes today's webinar on military health systems, women health emphasis. Uh, thank you all for attending, and a special thanks to our presenters for today. Um, everyone have a great day, and uh, please um, continue to look at the uh, Military One Source website for future webinars and upcoming events. Thank you very much.